Hello, and welcome to the American Library Association's Financial Learning Series. Anyone who's been involved with the association for any length of time understands that ALA is a very diverse and complex organization. This is particularly true in the area of finance, where the interrelationship between all of its units, programs, and activities is very strong. Whether you're a longtime member of the association or, just, or you've just joined for the first time, Understanding ALA's finances can be very challenging. In an effort to minimize this challenge, as well as to provide those with financial responsibility, and specifically those interested in certain own committees, the Budget Analysis and Review Committee, BARC, has prepared a number of finance-based webinars called the Financial Learning System Series. These webinars are designed to cover a number of key and basic financial concepts that staff and member leaders deal with on a daily basis in carrying out their responsibilities. Additionally, they will be available for your access at your convenience and submissions of questions through ALA Connect is strongly encouraged. The topic of discussion for this session is the operating agreement, which is presented by Clara N. Borer, Director, West Bloomfield Township Public Library. And with that, I'd like to turn over the discussion to Clara. Well, welcome to ALA's webinar on the operating agreement. I'd like to begin with some general background information. ALA is a single legal and corporate entity with indivisible assets and a single set of uniform administrative procedures. Within ALA, there are 11 divisions focused on either a type of library or a type of library service, each with a statement of responsibility developed by its members and approved by ALA Council, a set of goals or strategic plan which drives its activities, an executive director or other personnel to carry out its programs, the responsibility for generating revenue to support staff and carry out programs, and a separate division board of directors elected by its members and responsible to ALA councils. All members of a division are first members of ALA. ALA members join divisions on a voluntary basis as a way to become active and support those special interests that are important to them oftentimes interests that are specifically related to their job responsibilities. Divisions allow ALA members to find a home in what is a very large complex organization and play a critical role in the success of the association's efforts to fulfill its mission. ALA and its divisions are inextricably linked. The relationship is so vital to the success of both that an operating agreement was adopted by Council in 1989. It is ALA Policy 6.4.1. The agreement focuses on three areas which are currently listed on the screen and to this day serve as a blueprint for the business and operational relationship that exists between ALA and the divisions. Now let's review in more depth the three purposes. In terms of defining the relationship, the Operating Agreements Foundation is based on a set of shared organizational values. We are a single organization with diverse parts working collaboratively towards a common mission. This collaborative relationship allows ALA to focus on broad mission-based activities such as intellectual freedom and advocacy, while the divisions can focus on specific areas of interest. By working cooperatively, ALA and the divisions help to meet the diverse needs of the membership and thus provide value for their membership dollars. The operating agreement also recognizes that divisions will and do flourish in carrying out their missions when given some level of authority and autonomy to do so. It is through the operating agreement that divisions have the ability to establish their own due structure, to seek external funding to pursue support for projects, to accumulate net assets, and this is also known as fund balance, which also can be used to support existing or new programs. Divisions have the ability to hold a national conference, 
they can conduct strategic planning in their area of responsibility, and establish or add to an existing endowment. This collaborative relationship is also defined by the fact that ALA provides the divisions with valuable general administrative, financial, membership, and publishing services. ALA services assist divisions in accomplishing their day-to-day -day activities, programs, and projects. On the screen is a listing of the services provided by ALA to the divisions at no direct cost as defined in the operating agreement. Divisions are required to use most of the services listed on the screen. It makes good operational sense to have centralized services since we are a single legal entity and it avoids duplication in costs. In addition, by supporting division operations through the provision of space and services, ALA provides tangible evidence of its recognition of the importance of divisions in meeting the needs of its members. The operating agreement also pays considerable attention to defining the financial relationship between ALA and the divisions. Divisions do assume full responsibility for their own staff and program related expenses. In addition, divisions are responsible for, for paying some of the indirect costs that support their day-to-day -day operations. Indirect costs are those expenses that relate to the centralized services provided by ALA. They are expenses incurred by the larger organization for the benefit of all, such as HR, office space, utilities, financial services. Divisions are assessed an overhead charge on an annual basis as a means for ALA to recoup some of their costs for the services they provide. The indirect cost rate, otherwise referred to as the overhead rate, is developed annually through a comprehensive and complex financial model. The financial model methodology and formula used to determine the overhead rate were agreed upon by ALA and the divisions when the operating agreement was established back in 1989. On the screen is the formula mandated by the operating agreement that is used to determine the rate that will be applied to certain division revenues. At this point, I'd like to recap what overhead supports. In addition to, a, to central administrative services such as HR, financial services, utilities, and building maintenance, which I've previously mentioned, Overhead paid by the division also covers the activities of the ALA offices, which are another essential component to carrying out the mission of the association. The offices are units within ALA that address the broader interests and issues of concern to the members. Offices are advised by member advisory committees. And since the offices are programmatically focused, they reflect the member determined priorities of the association within which they track issues and provide information, services and products for the members and the general public. Before I go into what division revenue is assessed, the overhead charge, I'd like to emphasize that certain division revenues are not assessed overhead. You can see the list of revenue exempt from overhead on the screen. The operating agreement recognizes division dues as the primary source for providing basic division membership services, so it is not subject to overhead. You can also see that donations and interests are not subject to overhead. So, what revenue is overhead assessed on? It's assessed at 100% of the rate on revenues related to conferences, institutes, seminars, and workshops. This would include registration fees, exhibit space, and meal functions that are not separately ticketed. It is assessed at 50% of the rate on revenues related to publishing. And this would include net sales of materials, subscriptions, webinars, 
in advertising, except in publications provided to division members as part of membership. But I'd like to emphasize again that overhead is not assessed on dues revenue. This slide illustrates the history of the overhead rate. In fiscal year 2012, the overhead rate assessed on conference-related revenue is 25.5% and 12.75% on publishing-related revenue. You know, you may notice that the indirect cost study and subsequent budget year in which the rate is applied is being phased into a three-year lag basis. This change recommended by the ALA Finance and Audit Committee and approved by the Executive Board resulted directly from division input. At a meeting of the divisions and the Budget Analysis and Review Committee, ACRL expressed concern that the overhead rate for the fiscal year was not known until well after their budget was approved. Divisions had to estimate what the rate may be when developing their budget which could be problematic if the estimate was off. The change will now mean that each division will know the exact overhead rate to use when developing a budget. The result is a positive outcome for all. This slide provides a snapshot of what the divisions paid in overhead in fiscal year 2010 as compared to the indirect costs incurred through the annual indirect cost study model. Please note that the indirect costs are not the actual costs paid by the divisions, but represent the costs that each division would be responsible for if there wasn't a formula in place. The investment by the general fund, which is the far right column, is an illustration of the difference between the overhead the divisions paid and the indirect costs allocated by the annual study. You will further notice that ALA does provide a small division subsidy, which is also spelled out in the operating agreement. This support ensures that a small or newly formed division can provide basic service to its members while it is growing its financial capacity. The subsidy is approved by the executive board, and the division is expected to work towards financial independence. YALSA is a perfect example of a division that started with a subsidy and successfully worked towards a strong financial position. This slide provides a historical view of division indirect costs, the overhead paid, and the general fund's investment as compared to total ALA indirect costs resulting from the annual study. You will note that over the last six years, division indirect costs have remained at a fairly constant 28% of total ALA indirect costs. Divisions are not the only units of the association that are assessed overhead. This slide illustrates the fact that publishing, ALA annual conference and midwinter meeting, and grants and awards all pay overhead based on the established indirect cost rate. Roundtables also pay overhead but at the flat rate of 10% of their membership dues. This slide illustrates the impact of the alternating odd even years of having two national division conferences compared to only one national conference. PLA and AASL hold national conferences in even years and ACRL in odd years. Since the overhead rate is applied to certain division revenues, which includes conferences, the amount of overhead contributed by the divisions each year can vary significantly. As a result, in odd years, when there is only one national division conference, the general fund budget must find other sources of revenue to make up for the shortfall in contributed division overhead. Now moving on to the last purpose of the operating agreement. No relationship one runs smoothly 100% of the time. For any relationship to work, there needs to be open and ongoing communication. The operating agreement provides for a flexible, cooperative framework to review, discuss, and address issues and concerns. The operating agreement 
is carried out under the direction of the ALA Executive Director. From time to time, issues or unforeseen circumstances arise that may require a clarification of how the operating agreement policy is implemented. One way to address the unforeseen is through the establishment of an operating practice. Per the operating agreement, the executive director brings together appropriate ALA staff and the division executive directors to work collaboratively to recommend how to address the issue in question. The recommendation is then documented in an operational practice. These practices are internal working documents. You can see topics on the screen that have been addressed by the establishment of operating practices. The operating agreement also requires a meeting be held at both the annual conference and the midwinter meeting between the divisions and BARC, which is the Budget and Analysis Review Committee. The ALA's executive director and key members of the ALA finance team usually attend this meeting as well. While BARC is responsible for scheduling the meeting, which is usually held on Sunday afternoon, the agenda is a shared responsibility. Division leadership is asked in advance for items to include on the meeting's agenda. This is a great opportunity for divisions to ensure that the meeting is relevant and meaningful. It is important that division representatives attend the meeting to hear updates from BARC on the operating agreement and other financial topics, but also to bring forth questions and issues. Don't let issues simmer. This is the best time to openly discuss items and, um, and obtain information, clarification, and explanation. This concludes my remarks on the operating agreement. Questions about information in this webinar or on the operating agreement in general can be submitted on ALA Connect through the ALA Budget and Finance Member Group. Membership in the group is open to all. More information on ALA finances may be found on the Treasurer's page of the ALA website under Financial Learning. You will also find an evaluation survey for this webinar. Please take the time to fill it out. Your feedback is important. And I urge you to take the time to view other webinars in our Financial Learning series. The Budget Cycle and Process, the Long-Term Investment Fund, and organizational structure are all important topics relevant to member leaders of divisions and roundtables. Thank you, Clara. This concludes our discussion on the ALA operating agreement. We'd like to close this session, as Clara suggested, by encouraging the viewers of this presentation to complete the survey located on the Treasurer's page. The submission of questions is strongly encouraged. We'd also encourage you to take the opportunity to replay this and other presentations in this series at your convenience and as often as you would like. Again, thank you for your participation.